Hi everybody. So continuing to rivet in the front uh, spar assembly to the horizontal stabilizer skins. Only a couple of videos left in this series before we move on to the elevator. Actually, no, not to the elevators. We'll actually be finishing up the rudder, uh, and then we'll be moving on to the elevators, or a combination of both. So I've taken care of most of the bucking at this point. Actually, I think all of it. And now it's just handy dandy squeezer time. I really, really wish I would stop pointing the damn camera into the sun. I haven't done that in a while, so... There, that's much better. So I've gotten all of the ones, uh, rivets that were easy to reach. The ones right near the nose, very difficult to get the uh, yoke in there, so I had to lay the horizontal stabilizer down on its side. What's, real, what's really amazing to me is that these pieces with all of the Clecos in them just weigh a ton. Once you start taking the Clecos out, you realize, geez, these parts only weigh like nothing. No wonder this thing's so fast. Uh, so here's a friend of mine, Mark. Uh, Mark's an A&P. Uh, works all around the Bay Area here. I lean on him for advice and inspection of my pieces. So here, laying in the uh, rear spar, so once the front spar assembly is in place, the rear spar goes in. Uh, and after you click owed everything up, also click o the uh, main ribs to the rear spar. And we start with the pop riveting. So we pop rivet in the uh, rear spar to the ribs itself. And Mark had graciously uh, agreed to help me with this uh, final uh, construction. And I believe I, we even have a member join us uh, here as well. So, yeah. Uh, once you pop rivet the rear spar into place with the ribs, everything just starts to fall into place. I was always kind of hesitant about using pop rivets, but... Uh, we did a test piece, Mark uh, showed me, we did a test piece with two pieces of metal, uh, one with solid rivets and then the other one with pop rivets, and he just looked at me, he's like, okay, now go ahead and grab these pieces and rip them apart. Uh, you, you can't, they're, they're just as equally strong, and I mean, I'm using full force with my hands trying to pull two pieces of metal apart in a way that will never happen in regular flight. I mean, granted, you have a lot of vibration stress over time in, a, in an airplane, uh, which isn't anything like trying to rip it in part with, by, with your hands, but still, the, the strength of the rivets is, in my mind, perfectly, perfectly fine. So the first thing that Vans has you do, of course, like I said, is you pop rivet the rear spar to the ribs. And I believe I had saved uh, a couple of... He'd, ne he'd never actually uh, used a rivet squeezer like this before, so... Uh, he, he has, like, big, huge floor squeezers with massive jaws that have huge throws, like, you know, 15, 20 inches. Uh, he'd never used a handheld model, and he, he, he liked it. <coughs> so, uh, and the rest of these rivets are the top ones. You can see the Clico sticking out with the rear spar. Uh, what Mark had uh, suggested uh, is that we start from the middle and start going out to try to reduce any uh, pillowing of the uh, metal or, or uh, you know, having any waves in the metal going out. 
he had never seen a Vans, and he definitely hadn't seen it all pre-punched like this, and I told him, you know, it lines up exactly. But better safe than sorry. So we're taking care of a la couple last-second uh, rivets in the center uh, that needed to be bucked uh, from the other side, which were uh, definitely challenging, but really helped with a friend there. So anyway, uh, we will continue to uh, rivet in the top, oh, I'm sorry, the rear spar in the next video. Oh, there you can just see one of the members joining us. So join us for the next video.